I think of three priority areas um, that are going to be important for those of us that work in environments where DEI feels threatened right now. And by the way, this is not every environment, not every single environment. This is actually a nice moment to see where the we truly had organizations that were seeking to embed DEI in the fabric of who they are, true champions of DEI versus those that were being performative or doing what they felt was expected of them. In organizations where we're feeling the threat and our budgets are being examined, um, what I think we need to do is three things. Um, number one is focus on keeping our leaders engaged. One of the ways to keep our leaders engaged is by constantly reminding them of the imperative that they had and that they expressed and committed to explicitly around their around why they were driving DEI and um, linking back your efforts to those imperatives that they had communicated. And I think there's also a lot of power in um, scripting, like planning to have conversations with your leaders around the cycles of DEI. So th this is just a moment in time where we're feeling a threat, but if there's a global event or a um, uh, uh, responses from our employees or something that happens in the workplace that brings the focus back on DEI, we're gonna be really um, best positioned to handle those moments if we didn't take the, the, our foot off the pedal. So it's one, keeping our leaders engaged, and really assessing what their imp imperative is and what they need to hear. Number two, data, 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 data. Like never before, for, for years and years and years, with you and I have been talking about collect your data, collect your data, collect your data. Often we're doing it in the background. I'm gonna talk more, I think, as we move on in trends, what, what those data sources are. And for those of you that like probably have the data but haven't looked at the data, I'm gonna give you some advice on what to look for and what to look at. The last thing I want to say is um, one of the things that you can do to keep your leaders engaged is, is respond to their real questions around um, prioritizing DEI initiatives. And Ritu, we had talked about this actually last year, what each DEI person, um, leader, team can do if they're, they're feeling the threat. And what I would say is creating some kind of like decision matrix, uh, making matrix on what the most impactful DEI things you're doing are so that you're not showing up at the table being like, we need to do it all. We need to do it all. You're actually being practical. And how I would decision make those is on four factors. Um, what things you're doing make the highest impact are the most feasible, as in we can do them right now, we're ready, there's a readiness and, and we have what it, what we need in place, the infrastructure, the scaffolding to do them, um, are resource manageable, so can do them within the, the existing envelope and or with, a li with, with limited investment or limited additional investment. And for right now, for our sake, I think we should focus on the things that bring a lot of visibility to our work, caveat being, um, managed for the risk and for the uh, resistance, doing high impact things that are nicely visible, especially to our minoritized employees and to leaders who need to feel pulled into the imperative, really important. So looking through the enormous list of things that you could be doing and prioritizing.